Okay, well, um, I've looked at AM modulation with the uh, Tiny SA. Let's take a look at FM modulation. Those will be the two popular modulations that uh, most of the uh, viewers, I think, will be using. And people, I think, understand what AM modulation is supposed to look like with sidebands. You can have a, a center carrier with, uh, with two sidebands, and that's AM modulation. You can have a center carrier with single sideband, and then you can have carrier suppressed single sideband, which is what most uh, ham radios do. So you, you imagine that uh, if you have a center uh, carrier and two sidebands, you have a lot of power that's needed to transmit that signal. So if you can get rid of one of the lumps, then you can put all your power on the other lumps. So if you get rid of the center carrier, uh, that gets rid of a third of it. And if you get rid of one of the sidebands, that gets rid of another third of it. So you can put all of your energy only into one third of the total and you can transmit farther. So that's, that's why single sideband works. And you can pick the lower sideband or the upper sideband. So there you go, that's uh, AM radio and, and single sideband. Now FM radio is a bit different. FM radio is when you kind of wiggle, uh, wiggle the signal back and forth to do the modulation. And uh, that expresses itself in frequency domain a little bit differently. So in the frequency domain, we're gonna see a whole bunch of sidebands. So let's go ahead and turn on FM modulation. So in FM modulation, we get a uh, carrier plus a bunch of sidebands. So uh, I'm modulating with a 10 kilohertz uh, signal. And so let's change the resolution and bandwidth here, not span. Let's change the span yeah, there we go. So we're, we're spanning uh, 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz. So every uh, vertical line is 10 kilohertz. So you can see we have a first, a first lobe at 10 kilohertz, then one at 20 kilohertz, one at 30 kilohertz, one at 40 kilohertz, and they fall off depending on your deviation and things like that. So I'm not gonna get into that. I just wanna see if uh, we can actually see that signal on the Teeny SA, and we can. Uh, it's actually working really, really good. So there was a software uh, change recently um, that addressed some of the issues that I had. Uh, one was that the resolution bandwidth was better if you set it to three kilohertz than if you let it go to the 2.6 kilohertz. So that's been fixed in the software. And now uh, we're getting really good resolution between peaks. So it's, it's locking it down to three kilohertz now. So that's working good. The other change that was made was that when signals were above minus 30 dBm, uh, we saw a lot of mixer uh, problems. Um, and so they've modified the software to uh, try to keep the uh, tiny SA with lower signals. So they've, they've changed the internal attenuator to lower the signal. Um, it seems to work really good in FM signals. It still seems to be a problem with AM signals. And uh, there's a wiki page, uh, kind of uh, hodgepodge user guide to, uh, uh, to the tiny SA. And, and so if you read all of the different wiki things, you can kind of get an idea what's going on. Or really need to have a comprehensive document on how to use this thing. Um, when it settles down, I'll try to make a more comprehensive video on how to use the uh, Tiny SA. Um, but right now it's in too much flux and, and uh, I'm just going to be making videos uh, as I learn about the product and as the software changes. So um, in FM mode, it seems to, to choose the correct um, attenuation level. In AM mode, I found that you need to introduce another 10 dB. So if you use the auto settings, it still looks funny. You get all of the weird sidebands and everything. And if you add just 10 more dB of attenuation, then you get a clean looking signal again. So it's too bad that they couldn't detect uh, um, that particular case and have the tiny SA go into the correct range. Um, obviously other instruments know how to do that. So I'm not sure exactly what the problem is, but um, in FM mode, it does seem to be choosing a, a reasonable 
uh, a reasonable attenuation. Let's go ahead and change the attenuation to see if it does get better though. Right now it's choosing 25 dB of attenuation. So let's go ahead and go to the full 30 and see if it gets better or not. So that would be in level, attenuate, manual, 30. And no, it didn't change. It didn't change. I don't really see much difference in the phase noise. So we'll go ahead and leave it back on auto. And it's gone back to 25 dB. So uh, in FM mode, it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, so this is what, like I said, this is what FM modulation looks like. Let's change the... Um, Oh, let, let me also mention that this has a three kilohertz bandwidth, and this is now using a one kilohertz bandwidth. So we're getting much better resolution over here. Um, we could change it, but I can't kind of match. Anyway, we'll just leave it the way it is. Um, let me change the frequency of modulation. Let's go to nine, uh, eight. Let's go down to five, see how it does at five. So at five, we're still seeing it. So FM modulation is kind of funny. Um, I don't want to teach it here, but uh, there's um, things to do with Bessel functions and stuff, but um, the shape of the modulation, the, the uh, uh, harmonic structure of the signal will change depending on the frequency of modulation. Anyway, this is four kilohertz. You can see we're getting a little dip in the center and we can see that dip over here. Now the band pass characteristics, the, the IF filter characteristics of the tiny SA are kind of a square box shape filter. And so you get kind of these little square, little box shape things. Whereas the, uh, filter shape of a typical spectrum analyzer is very Gaussian. So you get these sharp peaks. Um, but I mean, it is doing what you need it to do. Uh, the other thing that we can do is to change, um, let's see here, we can change, uh, I'm gonna do a, I'm going to do a peak hold over here and I'm going to change the modulation frequency and I'm going to change it between different values. And you can see that it's kind of filling things in. Okay. And so you can kind of get a shape of, uh, of your modulation. Uh, now, I don't think this, spectra anal this spectrum analyzer will do it. Um, if you have a spectrum analyzer that can capture the peaks and the, the highs and the lows, then you get a delta and you can use that delta for a measurement to tell you the deviation, but this spectrum analyzer won't do it. Um, let's see if we have peak hold over here. I know we do. Let's see if I remember how to get to it. Um, should be in display calc. Yeah. Uh, display calc and max hold. Let's do max hold. All right. So the yellow is the max hold. So let's do a sweep of frequencies. Now this is sweeping very, very slow. This is sweeping uh, two seconds of sweep. So it's going to take a while for it to fill in. I'm going to have to kind of pause at each, um, at each setting for it to capture the value. And it's starting to capture and fill in. So if I had a, a setup where I could externally modulate the um, the, the uh, audio, sweep the audio back and forth, then I could automatically uh, I could automatically fill that in. But 
Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's doing basically the same thing. So um, I think originally uh, it was said that the tiny SA couldn't look at modulation things, but I just don't think that's true at all. It, look, it, it looks like it can look at modulation just fine. Um, so anyway, uh, that's a brief introduction to FM modulation and whether the uh, tiny SA can uh, accommodate that or not. And I would say yes, uh, I think it works quite well.